Okay, so we're going to install the Emacs ES08MA2 into the SCX24 here. Um, we're going to probably start by popping the pin, open it up. With the stupid top, it's easier to lean it on something. So we'll lift it like that. I'm thinking you could probably swap it just to the front here. Probably you could take the bumper off too and just pull it through. But I think it's going to be easier if I just drop the axle by undoing the, the shock here and over here as well. Um, if I undo those, it'll let me just drop the axle nice and low, and then I can just pull it straight out the front. I'll probably take off this screw here as well and pop this whole thing out without it being connected to the front tie rod. Um, but let's see how this goes. Okay, we got one dropped. Two dropped. So now, yeah, now that can hang nice and low here for us. And that should easily let us just pop this guy out of here and put the new one in. So let's see how that goes. Come on, focus. So we're taking out this screw here. Boom. And then we're taking out the one on this side here as well. Right here. Super easy. Boom. And now that guy's free, but to make it easier, we'll probably just take off this one because it's a front facing bolt. So we're going to take off this one here. I have an o ring on there. They get rid of a lot of the slop. Definitely worth investing in. If you have any o rings sitting around, you can go buy them online. I had these left over from my RC drone days. It used to sit and float the um, flight controller. And there we have it. This guy is free. We can lay him down here next to the the new one. No, oh, wow. Look at that size difference there. The new one's nice and big and beefy comparatively. So, cool. Well, let's get the one of these guys here figured out which one we need, hooked up on this guy, get rid of the servo saver, and hook on the drag link. Yeah, I think that's the right name. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay, so these are the screws that came out of the old servo when I was mounted it. These are the screws that came out of the old differential cover here. There are the bottom two screws on it. The top ones were longer. Uh, focus. So I used the bottom two because they were longer than those original ones. And then I just 3D printed these itty bitty little spacers here to take up the slack between this wing here and the side of where the screws go in here. I didn't want it stressing straight on the threads, so I thought I'd put a little spacer I made. It's uh, two and a half millimeters tall, and it's like four millimeters wide with a 1.5 millimeter hole. Um, I'll put the file in the description if anyone needs it. It's really a simple design, though. I also curled the wire on the new servo. I just wrapped it around this guy, and that was easy. Uh, we'll see if it fits with the curl. I might have to make it a bigger curl. We'll find out. Uh, but now we're gonna drop it in with the spacers and see if it all fits right. Oh, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip these corners right here and right here off of this guy so that they have more clearance up inside of here. When I do angles, they won't get caught. So as you can see, I already clipped that corner off. I'm just using an angle snip like this. And it comes right off. Nice and clean. Easy peasy. Now I should have plenty of range of motion. I'm going to take some sandpaper and round out the edges and stuff. But easy as that. No big deal. I think the bottoms will be fine because they're underneath the housing, so they'll be pushed up against this edge right here, so they don't matter. It's just this top corner that I took out. Um, yeah, so I just took a little bit of sandpaper, used some like 800 grit, sanded the corners down, made them nice and round, so now they won't snag at all, I hope. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Okay, so I got the screws and spacers in there, and as you can see, there's still plenty of thread to catch, and it's about how much catching of thread these probably had over here. Um, so we're going to drop it up into the axle here now. I didn't end up having to cut anything. I was thinking I was going to have to cut this corner here out. But I just ended up figuring out that if with this little slice on here, you can just fold it up like that and it will fit because there's that corner cut out for you. So I didn't have to do any cutting at all to the frame. So the kit came with, I mean, like all these other arms, but it came with this arm and this arm. And this one has two pins and this one has three. And I think I'm going to actually use this one and cut three wings off because it fits the right length 
while if you use the longer one that's already single, as you can see, if I can keep things right, it's a bit longer and I don't want to have to cut it off. I'd rather cut that one down and have the nice round edge on it. So I'm going to do that. Probably just use my angle snips. Okay, so here's my new one. I cut off the wings. One of them went flying. I don't know where the hell it went. And then so there's the long one for comparison. You can see that. There's definitely a size difference, but I think the shorter one will be the one to go with. Um, I sanded it all down, made it look good. Now I'm going to attach it to this arm like the other one was, and then I will center the wheels and pop it on the front of the servo. Okay, so I went ahead and I powered it on, powered on my controller, centered the zero on the controller here, um, right in the middle there, the channel one one, centered that out. Um, the car's back off right now, just so you aren't getting blinded by headlights, but I centered that and I centered, the, moved the wheels back and forth to Jerry Jim it, and then I turned it off. So now this should be the position for center. So now I'm gonna reattach the drag link, center the wheels, and plop the bad boy on there and close it up, and hopefully we will be centered. And then Tram will clean up the rest. I also plugged it in, if I didn't mention that already. Okay, so I got it all situated back in there. Um, I don't know if you can see this well with the camera brightness. Come on, focus, please. But I took one of those extra little wings, one of these little guys right here and I put it right over top of the other one so that the thread wasn't just sticking out into the open. I wanted to cover the thread up and I didn't want to make a new washer. So I just put another arm there. You can sort of see it there. Um, and I will say these things do not turn without you having the power on and turning it. So you can't turn your wheels by hand anymore with this new servo. But it seems to have lots of power. We'll give it some test runs here in a minute. Okay, so I rehooked up. Wow. Well, okay. That thing's going to just plop down on me. Stay. So I rehooked up shock number one and shock number two. I ran this wire up through the middle of the Y for the LED lights and then over top of them so that way when it travels, it sort of leaves that wire in the spot. I love how this thing always falls. Can't wait to fix that. Make sure you reconnect the drive shaft after dropping the axle before reconnecting the shocks or you'll have to take the shocks back off, reconnect the drive shaft and do it all out. So uh, give me a second. Joints the same way for the U-joints so that they match how the back ones are where there's they're both facing the same way, if that makes sense. They're not 90 degrees off. They're the same way. Um, okay. Um, we got it all hooked up. Let's see how I guess it runs. Oh, and there's one last piece of advice I completely forgot to mention. Um, so if your server is making odd noises when you're turning full left or full right, um, you need to turn down the dual rate, the D slash R option on your controller. If you pop the hood, it's in like the top right. Um, you need to turn that down until the servo isn't trying to go past the wheel's endpoints. So if you crank all the way to the right, you want to turn the dual rate down until you stop hearing the noise, theoretically. Um, but you want to make sure that you're still getting full travel and that you don't see anything trying to bend or flex while you're at full left or full right. I had to go a little bit to where I couldn't go full left, I think, because right the bar was hitting something if I went all the way to the end, so I turned it back a tiny bit. Um, but outside of that, it's not a hard install. I would definitely recommend anyone doing this. If you can change your battery, you can change the servo. Um, it's just some screws. Um, even if you don't have the front diff cover like I did in those extra screws, you can definitely use the screws that are inside of the kit. If you um, use those, you'll probably have to drill the holes out a little bit on the servo tray and make them fit, but it could be done. You don't need the spacers. That's just me using my 3D printer and an excuse to use it. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below. I'll have the file, um, a link to Thingiverse for that little tiny spacers if you want them. Um, but yeah, appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Hopefully it helped you out. Uh, if there's anything unclear, just let me know and I'll try to clarify. Um, have a great rest of your day. Um, I'll catch you guys in the future. Thanks. Bye.
the new servo. Bam, 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 bam.